Hello everyone, welcome to another ODNT Spotlight. I'm Steve DeWinter, your host, and we have with us today an excellent, wonderful author guest, Elizabeth Stevens. She has traveled all over the world. It's been a political correspondent, a travel writer. What a great way to travel and get paid for it, huh? And she's here promoting her new novel that just came out in April of this year called Population. And uh, we'll definitely talk to her about that and see what this book is about. And I really like that cover. That's a really cool looking cover. So let's go ahead and let's switch on over and let's meet Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. How's it going? It's going great. So population, uh, that is what, what genre of novel is population fit into? So I would say that it is uh, science fiction, post-apocalyptic, though I like to call it an amalgamation of horror and romance because this is my two favorite genres. And that is why I brought up that question because I knew you were trying to do an amalgamation of horror and romance. What is that like? <laughs> that Those are two, I you know, I, I anticipated those genres are opposite ends of the bookstore and you've, <laughs> you've blended them together. How did you do that? First, let's ask, what is that blending? Well, you know what? Um, I can easily answer that question for you because what I've always found romantic is maybe not necessarily your standard, you know, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, but I like when characters go out of their way to do really remarkable and impossible things for one another in impossible and remarkable circumstances. So um, books like, uh, uh, books like uh, uh, more, more so like, True Blood than like Twilight and movies more so like True Romance, which I don't know if you know, which is one of the most violent movies I've ever seen as opposed <laughs> to Pride and Prejudice. So um, <laughs> that's always really been what's touched me because I'm a weirdo. Uh, yeah. So I decided to, to take that genre myself and run with it. Excellent. So what is uh, population about with a title like that? That's a pretty generic term. But being a post-apocalyptic novel, I would expect that population is a big concern, or the lack thereof, maybe. Yes, definitely more so the latter. Um, I think a lot of people get confused. I look sometimes on my Amazon page and see uh, recent customers also viewed um, books on population decline and, uh, you know, <laughs> nonfiction books. This is fiction, people. Fiction. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this is definitely fiction and absolutely has to do with population decline. And I hope that those, those viewers come across and see the cover and realize that this is perhaps not exactly the, the book that they were looking for and maybe will enjoy it anyways. Um, so population is actually about... Um, the end of the world caused by uh, a foreign invading species. They're a predatory race of beings that I call the others. And it's about one young woman struggling to survive and to keep her family alive um, against all odds in this pretty stark and desolate climate. It takes place in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, some of you may recognize some of the locations throughout the course of this book and the, the sequel. So keep an eye out. Ooh, do we have a title for the sequel yet? I do, but population I, 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 control. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. We are not um, going to so, reveal it on this show, so you won't hear it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually would be willing to reveal it, and the title of the next book is called Saltlands. So keep an eye Ooh, open for that. Saltlands. And do we have any? Uh, do we have a, a estimated time of arrival for Saltlands? Yes. So Saltlands will be coming out next year in May. Oh, excellent. May of 2016. For my birthday, that'd be a great birthday present. Oh, perfect. <laughs> excellent. So you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> the sequel to Population Saltlands coming May 2016. So now the pressure's on. Now you have to do it. And yeah, that's all you need is oh just gosh, pressure. Now it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> now it's out there. Too late now. So you, you f um, focused population a lot in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm, I'm guessing a lot of trees and rain and just yes, a absolutely. difficult environment to survive in. Yeah, exactly. It's difficult enough already. So it was not so much a stretch for a post-apocalyptic book, but... Um, Absolutely. The growing up in, uh, and having lived in Seattle for so long, uh, the kind of looming ominous gray that we get in the in most of the year, with the exception of those couple beautiful, beautiful months in the summertime, was definitely <laughs> a great 
great way to set the stage for population. Excellent. Excellent. So you lived in Seattle for a while, which is where the book t- mostly takes place. And I'm guessing it moves to Utah for salt lands. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> but you have been a, you're a world traveler. I look at some of the places that you have been. You've got uh, Baltimore, Maryland, Atlanta, Seattle, Washington, Cairo, Amman, Paris, Beirut, Geneva. My goodness. So you were, uh, how, how did you end up traveling so many desperate, pla- disparate places? Not desperate. Paris is not too desperate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's a very good question. And I think would take more time to answer than we have on this show. But I, I actually grew up in West Africa, uh, Atlanta, and Seattle. And then when I started college, I studied the Middle East. Uh, I moved to Cairo, lived there for a while. I worked there for a little bit with the UN, got evacuated at the onset of the Egyptian revolution in 2011. Oh, man. Um, yeah, for a very short period of time. And when I graduated, uh, did another UN, uh, did another short term thing with the UN in Lebanon, but the violence in Syria erupted a bit. So I was pushed out of Lebanon as well. And that kind of put my Middle East plans on hold for a bit. So I ended up in Geneva after that, which is much more calm, much safer. And uh, yeah, and so from Geneva, I worked there for a year and before moving to South Africa, which is where I am now. Excellent. Yeah, people will notice that it's very dark where you are. It's only yes. 10 in the morning where I am. <laughs> so it's very dark there and everything. So... How did you come about, what was your seed for your idea for population? Uh, you, you sat down and you said, I want to write something. And, and I see here on your website that you're a fan of the macabre and you yes. like horror, but you also like romance. <laughs> and so what was the seed for your population novel? Oh, gosh, that's actually kind of a tough one, you know. Um, so I had been reading a couple of... Sorry, There's the Zerg. Yeah, we heard we, we there was a rumor that we would have an invasion by Zerg. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The cat you um, stole from your neighbors. Indeed, indeed, I did. <laughs> but you stole them with food, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So we feed him lots of beef jerky, and he keeps coming around. <laughs> yeah. So um. So uh, the population actually was kind of a, a two part inspiration. So one was. Uh, I, I read the book Angel Fall, which is a young adult book by Susan E. Absolutely adored it. And there's this uh, a beginning kind of fight scene that I just fell in love with. And I just I wanted to include something similar, but not so much with angels, make it a little darker, bring it up to the adult context. And then um, the title itself, the inspiration was simply driving by one of those signs in the U.S when you're entering a new town and I actually missed the name of the town but right under it all I saw was population and it was a population of like 637 and I just thought wow what would it be like living in a world with only a population of 637 and and that's exactly that's exactly how the book began wow so that's how you got your title (laughs) I like that I like that (laughs) I'm surprised that the, your your publisher didn't decide to use that part of a sign, you know, the green sign by the side of a road, the city in the background says population. Yeah, oh, that actually would have been a good one. But the the book cover designer, I have to give her a shout out, Amygdala Art, absolutely fantastic. The woman working there named Ida, she worked with me so closely on the cover and I could not be happier. Yeah, let's bring that up real quick here. There it is. So I'll cover me. So there is population. <laughs> And I really like that. You got the city and the birds and it's dark, apocalyptic. It just tells me that population is not uh, high. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Which is exactly what it was meant to convey as well. <laughs> and so that that's, I love that color. That's a very good cover, Elizabeth. So good job on you and working with your artist for that. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Ida. <laughs> a big shout out to Ida. Thank you. <laughs> So you went and you worked with a publisher, Vantage Point Books, for that. Yes. And I know a lot of people right now, the, the, big, the big thing in the universe for all of us new writers and writers that are just starting out, self-publish, self-publish. What made mm-hmm. your decision to go with a publisher rather than just 
pushing the button at Amazon and saying, ah, I self-published it. You know what? It's actually got a lot to do with confidence. And so I don't want to undersell myself here, but I am not, um, I never actually intended to be an author by trade. So I've been writing since I was 11 years old, um, but stories that I only ever kept to myself. I had finished only one book prior to completing Population. All the others are kind of just these incomplete, you know, sagas that will last, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages. So I don't know much about the industry, or I didn't know much about the industry. I obviously know a lot more now after having gone through this process. And so I ended up um, getting put in touch with, you know, one person, knew another person, and getting in touch with a woman who had actually just recently opened her own independent press, uh, and they specialize in the promotion of authors and characters of color. And I thought being a person of color with a character of color, that fit pretty well. Perfect fit. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> And she she read my book and really loved it, and we've been working together ever since. Excellent. So this is your first full length novel that you've completed. Yes. And but it's not the first thing that you've published. You do also have some short stories. Yes. So um, my short stories are pure horror, none of the romance, <laughs> um, and they're they're pretty brutal. And you can find them all on my website as well um, for free. They've been published previously uh, via various independent e-zines and things like that. Um, yeah, but they're all on booksbyelizabeth.com now. Yes, so I have um, Elizabeth's website in the all the links down below. I have a bunch of her links here. I've got her website, I've got her Facebook, her Twitter, her Goodreads as well as the link to her books on Amazon. Well, book, uh, but we got more coming soon. <laughs> but definitely. definitely, if you're watching this video embedded in another website, just click the little button down there that says watch on YouTube, and then you can see the description down below. Click on her website link, and then click the short works link at the top, and then you'll be able to download in PDF a bunch of her short stories that are pure horror, and they look really good. So do that. All right. Definitely. So you are a travel writer, so it says on your webpage. I always like to stalk all my people before they come on my interview, so I have <laughs> questions to ask. And it says Good you are correct. a travel writer. So tell us yes, a little bet. bit about that. So um, basically, uh, being in Egypt during the tumultuous Egyptian revolution and then afterwards, I'd always written for myself, you know, in a journal, um, never online. And so finally I started a blog and I think this was in 2012 actually. So I went back to Egypt that summer and was there during the election of uh, Mohamed Morsi, which was extremely fascinating. And just seeing the protests go by under my window, I just thought these were the kinds of things that had to be documented. And as so few foreigners had actually gone back to Egypt at that point, uh, I, I thought that, you know, if I'm in such a position of privilege, then I should absolutely take advantage of it. And the same thing in Beirut. Um, I think I was the only American that dared live in Haret Haraik, which is in the southern suburbs, uh, the Hezbollah-controlled neighborhood. And uh, being able to just write about my experiences there and the things that happened was really incredible. And I don't write actually in a political or journalistic style. I write very much in a narrative format, but was still able to sell uh, some of these to uh, political, mag politically focused magazines that were interested in, you know, just making sure that they were staying uh, au courant and on topic with uh, everything that was going on in the region. Very cool. Very cool. So you took your situation and you said... Let's make this interesting. Yeah. <laughs> as much as exactly. it was already interesting. <laughs> yeah. I know that I'm not exactly. brave enough to have attempted any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's more bravery or naivete, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> so how much does the influence of being in these places that were not at their best influence the story of population for you? You know what, population actually, um, I think it's been most influenced by uh, uh, actually the, the situation of women in some of these foreign countries. So I love having a woman as my female protagonist. I always do. I was going to say almost always. No, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just seeing the resilience of some of these women living in these 
countries and in these particular situations where it's not easy to be a woman and where law and order has broken down and still able to persevere and fight for their rights and fight for, you know, basic access to, to goods and fight for themselves has really just been so motivational and so inspiring. And, and I'd love to be able to incorporate that emotion and that sense in, in every character that I draw. So you've got a strong female lead for your story population, which makes your story that much more challenging. I don't think I've ever really bumped into too many dystopian, you know, everything is collapsed futures where it's not the gun-toting guys out there trying to say, come with me, we will take over what we need. <laughs> so you've, yeah, got, exactly. you've got the exact opposite. You've got the strong female lead saying, I don't need you guys. I'm going to do it myself. Exactly. And I actually find um, something really interesting is that in one of my short stories, as well as in the first few chapters of Population, uh, I had beta readers look at it and they actually, in the very beginning, didn't know the gender of the, the female, of the character, of the protagonist. Ah. Which I thought was really so you let them, in their mind, set something up so that when you finally reveal that, it's a, oh, surprise. You know, I don't even try and do it as a reveal. In my head, it's always a woman, but I suppose the <laughs> perhaps the character traits come off as masculine because that's what we're used to. Which is interesting, and, and maybe it's because I have a lot of my novels and stories have a female lead as well. When I went and I read through the first chapter of Population, and... I didn't think it wasn't a female. I, I thought right. it was a woman, you know, there yeah, with well, the small 11 year old <laughs> child and everything. So I, I think it's from the perspective, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, uh, enlightened male. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I got it <laughs> when I read it. <laughs> oh, then you're definitely in my target demographic. Yeah, definitely. I, I really enjoyed <laughs> that first section as I was reading it. I'm like, I could see it. I was there. I really, really enjoyed it. And for those of you watching on the interview here, um, I have a link to the Amazon, her Elizabeth's Amazon page. Just go to Amazon and check out the preview and you'll be hooked and you'll, you'll pick it up. So it's, it's worth the read. And I really enjoyed it. I'm really glad. So, so in it, you talk about the world before and the world after. And so that's what the characters call it. Yes. For that. And it's, it's after Alien Invasion, so it's a sci-fi horror romance. Yeah, yeah. But, exactly. but it's, not, it's not your typical romance where girl meets guy, girl falls in love with guy, they have an argument, they fight, and they make up. It's no. more of the family romance or the being with people, the romantic element of caring. Yes, Is that so right? they're... they're is a male female romantic element but there is also obviously the main plot of the story is about the relationship between a woman and an 11 year old girl and kind of what she's willing to do to protect uh, um, her family who she considers her family so there's both excellent excellent sounds like you've got it all covered <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> excellent excellent all right um, I have hit all my ideas, including your borrowed cat <laughs> and everything. So before we uh, close down the interview, Elizabeth, is there anything you would like the people watching, potential new readers or your existing fans who are watching this to learn more about you and see you in action? Is there anything else you would like them to know? Um, you know what? I guess I think you covered pretty much everything, but uh, just... Stay tuned next year for book number two coming out. Um, I'm also working on a young adult fantasy book set in Paris. So uh, that should also be hopefully coming out within um, 2016 or 2017. So, so keep an eye open for the upcoming works. Um, and thanks for tuning in. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much, Elizabeth. So don't hang up on me just yet. I'm going to go ahead and close down the interview here, and then I'll get back to you and we'll chat for a little couple more minutes. So Perfect. thank you thank very you so much, much for you. coming on ODNT Spotlight. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll be right back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. 
Okay, so that was Elizabeth Stevens, the wonderful author of Population, which is a sci-fi horror romantic romance novel. And it's just got everything there. You've got a kick-ass female protagonist. So two thumbs up from the Steve for that one, because I like to I like all those characters. And especially where we do the genre bending where we say, let's let's have a female lead take the lead. Why not? So once again, uh, check out the links down below. Um, I've got Elizabeth's website, her Facebook, her Twitter, her Goodreads, and you can contact, connect with her there. And then also check out Population on Amazon and just take a look at the preview. I guarantee you'll be hooked and you'll probably pick it up, probably like I'm going to. So hey, thank you very much for watching another ODNT Spotlight. Again, I'm Steve DeWinter. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I have many, many, many more interviews coming with authors, artists, actors, musicians. I have a music group coming up soon, so they're going to be a lot of fun. So don't forget to subscribe, uh, like it, share this with everyone, and thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.